I'm here to show you how to set up your Wacom Cintiq Companion 2 or uh, any of the Wacom products, the Intuos Pro or the Cintiq, they're very similar. There's just a couple of differences with the Wacom Cintiq Companion 2 that I wanted to show you. So I'll take you through step by step. This is particularly helpful to enable you to work without a keyboard, which is what I do quite often. So when I'm using my Wacom, I often sit in bed or on the plane and I don't need to get the keyboard out. I've got the Bluetooth keyboard, and I use it for shortcuts, but because I've set up all of my buttons down the side, set up all my shortcuts, it means I can use this machine on its own pretty much for anything. So here we go. First things first, in your Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, you will have your Wacom Desktop Center. Now I'm going to go down to, first of all, touch settings. Now this is to do with using your hands and using now on the tablet. So I have touch on. You can change uh, the settings in here, but I generally leave this as default. Down to pen settings. Now if we open up the pen settings here, you can see there's a whole lot of settings that you can customise. I really recommend getting into this and trying to work out the best way for you to work. Um, but I'm going to take you through the changes I've made, which have really helped my workflow. You may find that other ways of operating work better for you. So make sure you go through them all. So I've actually left the pen as default. I have it halfway between soft and firm over here and the double click distance is default as well. On the pen, double click is set to the top button right here and the bottom button is right click. So it's like using a mouse. If you're totally used to using a mouse and you're a bit scared about getting used to using a pen and a tablet, don't let it worry you. This is virtually like a mouse, except it's much more natural, better way of working, and the buttons are on the side. Eraser, same thing, I've left it as default. In here, you can see that you can actually use the tip of the pen to erase, just like a traditional eraser. So I've left it for that, but you could set it to something else if you don't often use that. Calibrate, calibration is really important and you wanna do this quite regularly and it will actually remind you. So we'll just go into the calibration system. Here we just go to our cross sections here and click right in the middle of the cross so that we can get our Wacom set up. We move it around and we make sure that our pointer is following our pen. If that's okay, press okay. All right, so next we can go into backup and restore settings. This is really an important section. You can save all of these custom settings that you will spend a little bit of time setting up and you can save them either to the cloud if you register with Wacom or you can save them to your computer. So I've got them saved in both locations and uh, you can then bring those back. So sometimes when you do an update, sometimes when you restart your computer, sometimes the default settings come back. So it's definitely worth saving these settings after you've done all the hard work. So you can back them up. You can back them up to the cloud, which I've done, or you can back them up to the computer. So you've got two options here. Okay, we're now going to go into pen and button settings, open express key settings. These settings are the ones that you really want to go in and customise. These are the ones that are the buttons down the side and the ones that you will use all the time. So let's just go through what I've set up. And as I said, this will differ depending on your workflow. So this is set up for my workflow, but it will change depending on what you're doing. Now you can set different settings for different types of programs. So I actually have different settings for Lightroom and then I've got all other. Now, 
I generally use this tablet for Photoshop and Lightroom, not much else. So for me, all other basically means Photoshop. But you might set your uh, side settings for browsing the web, writing emails, whatever it is, you can change the settings for that. So all other is Photoshop. Lightroom just has a few different options there. But let's just look at the Photoshop settings right now. So express keys. My top express key is set to escape. Now, the reason that I like to set that is because sometimes when you're using your hand to rotate your canvas, you need to press escape to get it back to straight up and down. So sometimes you might actually accidentally rotate as well, even if you didn't mean to when you're expanding, zooming in and zooming out with your finger, exactly like you do on an iPhone or um, you know on an iPad, so you can make things bigger and smaller. But if you twist, your canvas will actually rotate and I'll show you that. Okay. Now it's actually really hard to get this back to straight on. Really hard. So hit escape and we're back to how we started. So that is why I've got that actual button set to escape. Back into the express keys settings. All right, my next key is shift. So this button here is set to shift. Now you can change it to any of the modifiers. You really can change it to anything. So if I go into modifier, I have selected shift. Now I use shift a lot and in Photoshop, shift is obviously used to uh, constrain proportions. It's used to make straight lines, many different things. So shift is there right where I need it. The next one is alt on the Mac it would be option but this is alt and again go into modifier and you can choose which modifier key that you want to use. So alt is obviously color picker, you can duplicate layers with alt, you can do all sorts of things with alt in Photoshop and it's a very common key to use so that's that one. Down to the bottom three. Now as I said these settings are for the companion too but there are sometimes a different set of buttons. There is a scroll wheel on uh, the Cintiqs and the Intuos Pros. So you would set it up slightly differently. You try and keep your buttons the same. I've got an Intuos Pro and I've got my Wacom Cintiq Companion 2. And if I had it set up differently, I'd get confused. So I make sure that the essentials are the same and the options that I have with the scroll wheel on the Intuos Pro is a little different. Okay, so down to the bottom three that I've got set up here. Again, I've got a modifier, control, and as you know, in Photoshop, you would use control quite often or command in various circumstances. And then we've got space as a keystroke. So to set up a keystroke, you need to actually type that keystroke in. So you need to be able to type the keystroke in that you want and you can choose from anything. So if I want to place space in here, I'd clear this first, hit space, that is saved as a keystroke, then call it whatever I want and press OK. Same down here, my bottom button I use all the time is X. Switching between colors, very often when I'm masking, I'm switching between black and white. So X is a very common key for me to use. Again, it might be different for you, so work out what you use the most and you can set that. Let's go over to Rocker Ring. It's a bit different on the Cintiq or on the Intuos Pro because you have a scroll wheel, whereas you have a ring that with buttons on this. So I have set my top button right here to undo. Obviously a very common key to use. Now my keystrokes on the left and the right are set to the brackets, the square brackets, which make things larger and smaller. So make the brush larger and smaller. I've set that to these side buttons. It's a very natural way of working to make things larger and smaller. My keystroke down the bottom here is actually uh, backslash and that is to bring up my overlay on my mask. Again, it might be something that you don't do often. So choose the shortcut that you need set to set this to. But with all of these, it's exactly the same thing as before with keystroke, 
clear. You go into your keyboard or use a Bluetooth keyboard and set the keystroke that you need. Let's go into on-screen controls. I actually haven't got this set up at the moment, but I do use it at times when I know that I need extra shortcuts, not using my keyboard, and I want access to them. You can basically set these to anything. So let's try this now. So if we go into brush tools, for example, we can choose different ones that we want to set, brush size, which I've already got set. Uh, you might go into Wacom screen keys and then choose various options there. App shortcuts, so copy, forward, page up, undo, paste. So all of these, anything that you want to add, you can add as an on-screen control. So to get that up and running, you choose the one that you want, you choose the items that you want. So let's just say for now, undo, paste, um, forward and back. We'll choose express keys. And we need to change one of these buttons to the on-screen controls. So we go over here, click app shortcuts. Now when we press this, the on-screen controls will actually come up. So I'll show you that in Photoshop. So down here, we've got app shortcuts and all of the items that I selected. So you could put this to the side, you can uh, place it anywhere you want, you can change the layout of this, and this gives you the extra options that you want. Again, a great way of working if you're not wanting to get that keyboard out and you just wanna work with this on your lap or in a comfortable position. So those are basically the setting options on your Wacom that you can create just to suit you. I'm gonna go into Photoshop and show you why this is so much better than a mouse. Okay, so I can choose any of the brushes that I want. Uh, so I'll just go here to make a hard edged brush on 100% flow. And here we go, I'm painting with that or drawing with it. And it's very natural. It's a very natural way of working. I can write, I can sign my name, I can do whatever it is that I need to do. I can use the eraser and I can erase everything that I just did, just like using a pen. But the big change is when you actually set this to pressure sensitive. Currently, my brush is not pressure sensitive. I've got it set so that I can change the size with my buttons on the side and I know exactly what size it will be. I often work this way, but there are times that I need a pressure sensitive brush. There's a button up the top here, which turns on pressure sensitivity. So now, the softer that I touch the pen down, the smaller the line, and the harder that I press, the larger the brush. And it goes up to the maximum of the brush that you've set. So if I make this brush bigger, I can still start off small, but not as small as before. And as I press harder, it makes it bigger. You can do that with any sort of brush. So you might go with a soft edged brush. and full control over your pen and the way that you work. You can change the flow of your brush. Now, when I'm working, when I'm doing composites, I usually recommend it's best to change the flow rather than the opacity because the flow is like a gentle build. So you can start like that and then build it up. Even if we turn it right down, let's see it's soft, then build it up. If I keep stroking over the top of that, it's a gentle build. There is some overlap, but it's, it builds up. Now, if I do the same thing with the opacity, you'll see that it does work a little bit differently. So it's more of an overlap, which you may want for different circumstances. But I find that when I'm working with photos that using flow works better than using opacity for most things. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're wanting to turn it down, you can adjust the flow. Try that first before opacity. The last thing that I wanted to turn your direction to is the type of pen you use. Now I've got a tutorial up on YouTube which actually demonstrates this art pen. And I encourage you to go and have a look at it because it has saved me a lot of time using the art pen. 
The difference between an art pin and a regular Wacom pen is that the art pin you can turn as and rotate your brush. Uh, so for example, let's just bring this fern up, just quickly showing you that you can rotate with your hand and you don't need to go into the brush settings and manually rotate this around, which you need to do with the other brush. So if that's the sort of work that you need to do, I encourage you to check out the art pen, which is a lifesaver in terms of time. I hope that's helped and I do encourage you to write any questions that you've got and I'll try and answer them. Don't forget, it does take some time to get used to generally a couple of weeks. So if you can put that mouse away in a drawer and just work with your pen, you will find that you won't want to go back to using a mouse for this kind of editing work. My name's Karen Allsop and I'm from StoryArt.